When it comes to the Roman Catholic system, no other figure is as integral to that organization than that of the Pope. Titled the Vicar of Christ, millions of people see the Pope as God's representation on earth. To the early Protestants, however, this would be far from what they had come to believe. The one thing that men like Martin Luther, John Calvin, Thomas Cranmer, John Wesley, Charles Spurgeon, and many more all had in common was the belief that the titled Bishop of Rome was actually the Antichrist, or that the office of Pope was that of the office of the coming Antichrist. To get this analysis started, let's read a verse from the first epistle of John. 1 John 2 verse 18 Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Now some might be thinking, Antichrists have already come, so to be looking for a man that is the official Antichrist is a vain endeavor. What they fail to understand is that the Antichrist is not called only the Antichrist throughout the whole of the Bible but is called many other names such as the Little Horn, the Son of Perdition, the Prince of this World, and many more names. To demonstrate how the Antichrist is a singular person, let's turn to another passage. 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 1 to 4 Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. As Paul was redirecting deceived believers who were being told that the resurrection and ascension of the church had already taken place, he affirmed that a falling away was to happen first in order for the man of sin to be revealed. It would be foolish to think that the falling away took place in the first century. So let's continue with the context that this is a future event. It is after this apostasy that the Antichrist would establish himself in the Temple of Jerusalem as to be on the same level as God. Did this take place in the first century? Nope. Here's how we can know this through the book of Daniel in chapter 9 as the angel Gabriel is revealing to Daniel a prophetic outline as detailed in the course of 70 symbolic weeks. Let's read the verses in question to help show the distinction of this timeline. Daniel 9 verses 26 to 27 And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, 
and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. The Messiah being cut off is in relation to him being crucified, and the people of the prince that shall come was the Romans in 70 AD with Jerusalem's temple. This all took place within the course of the 63rd week, so when the 70th week happens, it is outside of that time and is in a time of its own in a future event. Now the abomination of desolation, as spoken of in Daniel 9 verse 27, and warned about in Matthew 24 verse 15 and Mark 13 verse 14, was that which was described in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 4. This is when the Antichrist, the son of perdition, or as referred to in verse 26 of Daniel chapter 9, the prince that shall come, places himself in the future temple of Jerusalem to have himself worshipped as God. Who were the people that destroyed the temple in 70 AD? That's right, the Romans. So the Antichrist is a Roman who places himself in the position of God for the adoration of the world, and not just any God, but the God of the Bible. Think about it for one moment. We are not to call any man father, as found in Matthew 23 verse 9, and yet here is a man that calls himself the Pope, or even the Holy Father symbolically putting himself in the place of God. We are also told in the scriptures that there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, as found in 1 Timothy 2 verse 5, and now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one, as stated in Galatians 3 verse 20. Something to also consider is what Lucifer said in Isaiah 14, how he boasted about one day being at the same level as God, and then finally exclaimed, I will be like the Most High. Could it be that maybe this blatant disregard for scripture is not something that a man who represents God would do? If the man is making himself a direct intercessor between mankind and God, he is claiming to be performing the function of Christ. Jesus Christ is the only mediator between God and man. If someone is trying to put themselves in the place of power only God can have, they are a liar and a deceiver. They are Antichrist. Isaiah 42 verse 8 I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. <laughs>